WNTK News Time 741. I just want to give a quick thank you again to James Pindle for checking in and talking about you know some political analysis and things that are going on with elections and things like that. We are in election season. One of the people running in congressional, actually the GOP candidate running in congressional district number two to face Ann Custer is Marilinda Garcia. She's on the WNTK Newsline right now. Good morning, Marilinda. Good morning. Thanks for having me. No problem. Uh, Mary Linda, you got a rousing. I, I thought this was good. Kelly A. I got out there and said, give me Mary Linda Garcia. What an exciting young leader. You're getting a lot of uh, press here about your age, your generation. You're a millennial. Why do you think that, that that's important? Why, why is a millennial candidate special in this election? Sure. Well, some of it speaks to what I've encountered since I ran, you know, way back in 2006, door knocking. Um, I would get one of two reactions, or excuse me, two of two possible reactions, but one of them, when I said, hi, I'm Mary Linda Garcia, obviously young, that was clear, um, and running for state rep, people would say, oh, that's great. You know, young people need to be involved. Um, that's really exciting and you know, you give me hope that young people do care and want to be engaged in this process. So now, obviously quite a number of years later, but running for Congress, it's similar. Um, it's similar in that people are excited to see that it's not necessarily just politics as usual and, you know, the same cast of characters, um, you know, perhaps moving on from, for example, in uh Representative Custer's case, their long legal and lobbying career, and then moving into politics. Um, they want to see that people want to, younger people want to sort of seize the day and uh, help make decisions about what, frankly, is going to be our future in the long term. I mean, those of us that have, God willing, you know, many decades to come in this country, we want to live the American dream and we want to see solutions enacted and reforms implemented that do solve some of the long-standing problems that we have in our country that uh, keep being kicked down the road uh, to future generations. So um, that part of it's important. And then otherwise, I mean, if you look at any type of organization, any type of board, a wide array of perspective, I think, adds um, to positive outcomes, not detracts from it. So, you know, why not have that broad perspective and um let millennials have a seat at the table as well. Oh, well, I also would say that that millennials and younger people are going to inherit the legislation that is passed right mm -hmm. now, and that's that's an important part of it too. And being able to have have some say in that, because I, I think one of the biggest issues you see in politics, and this has been going on since the dawn of the country, dawn of civilization, is like, wait a minute, you're making laws that are going to affect me and my kids for a very long time to come. Mary Linda Garcia mm -hmm. is uh, the GOP candidate in Congressional District Number Two. Mary Linda, normally when we get into these congressional races, a lot of taxation, business policies, and things like that. But this situation with ISIS, and now you got Coruscant, you got all these other groups that are getting involved. I am troubled that there doesn't seem to be a cohesive message coming out of the administration. Certainly, as a congressperson, you would put up with, you know, you'd have to deal with these types of pieces of legislation in action. I don't know where to go. I got a president who tells me we're not going to put boots on the ground. In the meantime, we have thousands of boots on the ground, CIAs on the ground, special forces. And then the very people who he's supposed to be speaking for and with say, we're going to put boots on the ground. As a congressperson, what would, what would you bring to the table on this, this uh, any type of action in the Middle East? Sure. Well, as a representative, you know, it's important, one, be a voice for, you know, what you're hearing back in your state. And that's what I hear uh, expressed as a concern from people, exactly what you said. It, at the end of the day, there's a lack of clarity of purpose and a lack of understanding, you know, whether we like it or not, the U.S. is involved in this region, um, and the U.S. is a superpower, and um, our actions have a lot of uh, consequences when it comes to what other, uh, you know, nations and nation states uh, do. And everybody's looking, you know, everybody's watching. So right now we're in the thick of it with ISIS and, you know, these uh, 
aggressive and unstable uh, governments, you know, Syria, Iraq, all, all of these areas. But you have to understand that Russia's looking at us, you know, China's looking at us, Iran, North Korea. They're all watching to see how we deal with it. So I, I, my concern is certainly that as well. If the president is saying one thing and his entire uh, team, you know, military advisory uh, board, if you will, um, is saying something else. And then, again, you're seeing that he says one thing, but the actions we're taking uh, don't necessarily uh, follow suit. I think it's very confusing, and it's what I've heard, um, you know, other leaders express as the problem, where our allies and friends can't, aren't convinced that we have their back if it comes to that, and then our, the aggressors know that they can get away with whatever, you know, whatever it is they try because uh, you're never sure. The U.S. is either predictable or fails to act. Mary Linda, last week, Ann Custer did vote to give President Obama authorization to to activate our military against ISIS. And to be fair to Ann Custer on this one, you saw Peter Welch over in Vermont vote against that. Actually, the whole Vermont delegation voted against it. If you were in office last week, would have you voted to authorize the president the, the war powers to go after ISIS? Well, here's the challenge. Yes, we need the powers, you know, an authorization to act, but my concern is, you know, trillion dollars to basically arm and train, again, these it seems a nebulous concept of rebels, right? I mean, we've seen this happen before um, in the surrounding uh, countries, right? I mean, you, you see it in Syria, Libya, Egypt, where there are those we uh, designated rebels who are apparently fighting the bad guy, you know, that we're helping to overthrow, and then next thing you know, a worse a group of actors overruns them, takes our arms, and then becomes, you know, is attacking us and increasing our problems in the area, as we see with ISIS. I mean, the weapons they have are what we provided uh, to the Iraqi uh, army, and so I don't know, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that, you know, those that are voting on this have a lot more information than I do, you know, uh, having gone through those hearings, getting that, you know, information again from our, uh, the leaders of our armed forces. But it does seem that we have a tendency to uh, just always want to respond by what, again, theoretically sounds good, that they should take control of their own destiny in that area, and we shouldn't put troops in harm's way, but I am concerned about... Um, always, it seems, turning to just giving arms, which then end up being used against us. Mary Linda Garcia is the GOP candidate in congressional number two to face Ann Custer. I think that one of the rallying cries that you hear about Middle East policy, which I think has merit, I don't think it's the sole issue. I think that the energy issue has merit. Just people saying if, if we weren't getting the oil there, it, this would be an issue. We'd just walk away from it. That's questionable. There are other other issues at, at play. The fact is, Mary Linda, we haven't had an energy policy in this country ever. We're still trying to operate a very diverse energy you know, landscape out there with no policy. Is that something that you'd focus on is to, to help us get an actual energy policy for the federal government? Absolutely. Um, well, you know, first of all, to your point, yes, of course, you know, we and all other uh, parts of the world do have an interest in that region. There's a lot happening when it comes to um, oil uh, production and development, etc. But, in fact, uh, the vast majority of our resources we get from Canada and South America, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, when it comes to oil. So what has uh, rang true to me is everyone I talk to, you know, those looking at the five- to ten-year um energy uh, problems in terms of access that, that we are likely to see in our state. You know, as we saw with the polar vortex last winter, people have serious concerns about, on the one hand, being able to heat their homes. You know, the price mm -hmm. is it's, it's getting very expensive. On the other hand, you know, the uh, gas taxes always seems to be looking to be increased. You know, how can we even get to our jobs anymore? You know, fill our cars, get around. But then look at what we could be doing in the country when it comes to development. I think that's one of the areas we could quickly um, harness, you know, what America does best. That's explore 
innovate, you know, create uh, and and distribute ourselves. So that's why it's concerning when, um, you know, we have a representative right now that votes to tax these types of things. They're, she's always supporting uh, cap-and-trade legislation, renewable energy standards, all, all of these types of things. On the one hand, um, voting against things that would allow for exploration when it comes to the Keystone Park pipeline, when it comes to safe um, exploration on federal land. I mean, these are things we have to be doing because, you know, we can't afford to sit on our hands anymore. Um, we need to get out there and become energy independent, and we can do that right here. When you bring up some, uh, you know, taxing issues like that, regulation, are you more in the camp that says, and talking about the the development of new resources and, and also being able to better utilize, what, you know, traditional sources of energy, are you on the side that says we should set up uh, subsidies and funds for private businesses to do exploration and development, or are you the one that says let's just get off their back and let them, let the chips fall where they may? If it works, it works. If it doesn't, you take risk in a capitalist society. I absolutely think, especially in these big areas, we don't want to be, you know, subsidizing and, you know, that word they like to use, investing in things that may not actually bring prices down, um, that may not, uh, you know, come to fruition and be successful. I think those things are best explored in the private market, um, and uh, that that's the way it ought to be. But what we have to do, again, is to allow for development and production on our own lands. Um, you know, we we had opportunities to increase oil and gas production on federal lands. And, um, you know, those are things Custer has voted against, and that's one of the reasons I'm running. It's a big concern. We need to allow for development and exploration that's safe, that's been tested in the private market, and that can bring our costs down and get us energy independent. Mary Linda Garcia, I only have about a minute left. Uh, just real quick, you've been pretty hot and heavy on Ann Custer about not holding town halls, not getting in front of her people in mass. Uh, if you're elected, you're going to hold town halls. You're going to get meet people. Yeah, I absolutely want to. I find, um, you know, through the course of the campaign, those are kind of the most honest uh, ground aside from debate, which I like because it's you know you. Uh, your principles, your brain, <laughs> you know, your communication skills versus the other one. Same with town halls. You get honest questions, you know, from citizens with real concerns, um, and you do your best to answer them. It cuts through all this clutter of, you know, press release versus press release and, you know, respond to this ad and, you know, um, and, and all of what swirls around um, in the rest of the campaign. So I, I appreciate town halls. I appreciate debates. Uh, where you can have that honest discussion and, and debate. Mary Linda, when I'm king of the world, I'm not going to hold any town halls. I'm not going to listen to anybody. I'm going to do whatever I want. How's that? <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> All right. Mary Linda Garcia, thanks for joining me today on WNTK and WUVR at Live and Local in the Morning. Good luck on the campaign trail. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. That's Mary Linda Garcia. You can learn more by going to her website, which is real easy to find, marylindagarcia.com. WNTK News Time is 7.